Greetings and welcome to the Waters of Healing. I am your host, Baba Lukman, here with Ray Wilkerson, the place where serious Black men come to express how we feel. We talk about the issues that are important to us in a non-judgmental and safe space. Our goal is that you find your inner king, your inner warrior, that you give up your power to nothing and to no one. But before we begin, let us first give honor and thanks to the Creator for giving us the gift of life, intelligence, and awareness. We seek the Creator's guidance and help. We acknowledge our humanness in that we are imperfect beings that must rely upon the earth and upon each other. It is important that we develop a healthy relationship with everyone and everything around us to the best of our abilities. And we strive to be one who isn't in conflict with our surroundings. Our communities should see us as protectors and mentors and never as the enemy. The Waters of Healing is intended to provide a safe, non-judgmental space for black men to talk about issues specific to us. This is an inclusive space open to all black males, no matter your religion, class, nor sexual identity. If you identify yourself as a black man, then you are welcomed here, okay? Let us begin by reciting the black man's affirmations. Kings are made and not born. I am developing the king in me. Warriors are made and not born. I am developing the warrior in me and I am not a coward. I believe in myself and my abilities. There is nothing wrong with me. Another person's opinion of me is not my reality. My masculinity is divinely given. It is not toxic. I give up my power to no one. I realize that I am not perfect, but that is no excuse not to do my best. I love myself for who I am. I am in charge of my own happiness and behavior. I don't take advantage of those weaker than myself. I accept 100% responsibility for my own life. My past mistakes are there for me to learn from. They do not define who I am. I am grateful for every day that I'm given to improve on who I am. Right now, I need you to do us a favor. I need you. I need all you guys right now to hit that subscribe button. I need you to hit that like button and definitely hit that notification button. So when you know the Waters of Healing is on, you'll be there. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Baba. We thank everyone for joining us tonight. And tonight on the Waters of Healing, we have as our guest, Nevin Perkins, who is a New Jersey, Jersey City native um, from Jersey City, New Jersey, a university student and community organizer. Nevin is a co-founder of both Black Men United and Free Them All New Jersey, two principal organizations active in North Jersey. Nevin is a youth mentor in Hudson County and a writer who serves on the editorial board of the Gothic Times student newsletter. Also we have with us is Chris Duran, who is also a co-founder of Free Them All New Jersey he is also a 2019 graduate of Seton Hall University with a bachelor's degree in history and Africana studies and minor in political science and Latin American studies. He and his peers at SHU were responsible for organizing the Council of Africana Scholars and the Concern 44 Student Movement. Also we have with us Naomi Ruth Stevens, who is a graduate from Seton Hall University in 2019 with a bachelor's in sociology, minor in political science. Naomi is the creator of Zion Park, a community rehabilitation project in the West Ward of Newark, New Jersey. Zion Park organizes under Free Em All New Jersey, providing event space and facilitation focused on political prisoners. We also have Noor Abuzid, who is a Secaucus, New Jersey native, who finds her community in Jersey City. She is a full-time student at Montclair State University. Nor organizes with Solidarity and Mutual Aid Jersey City, Gabriella, New Jersey, and Free Em All New Jersey primarily. Nor is also working on a resource outlet book club called Anti-Imperialist Material. Oh, wow. Um, first of all, let me thank you all for joining us tonight on the Waters of Healing. Um, we welcome you on uh, in our space. Hey, man, we're honored to be here, man. Believe me. All right, so let's begin. So, um, Nevin, um, tell us about Free Them All New Jersey. Absolutely. Uh, 
Free More New Jersey is a, a organization that's also a coalition of other organizations that are working, you know, to aid the globalized efforts to free all our political prisoners behind enemy lines. Uh, concentrated in New Jersey, looking to, you know, raise the consciousness in that particular area uh, through various programs and engagements with the community. Okay, and so when did this start? When did you find find or found the organization? I'll let my brother Chris speak to that because my connection is a little laggy and I want to make sure that's articulated properly while I fix that. Okay, Chris. Well, we were working on developing basically a network of uh, youth organizations uh, here in Jersey, especially around Newark and uh, Jersey City. Um, so a lot of like our experiences, like, you know, after last summer, like led us to that. And, you know, so we kind of came together you know naturally because some of us had done political prisoner work like while in college um so basically some folks who are not on the call right now uh came together you know with with nev nor and naomi and um uh, and particularly around the issue uh when, when the call went out from me abu jamal and the health crisis that he has been facing you know in the last few months uh we basically just decided to, you know, try to make an effort uh, around youth organizations in Jersey to, you know, uh, based on political prisoners, especially because we, you know, we kind of owe a debt uh, to those who, you know, whose shoulders that we stand on, so. Wow. So we also have um, two young ladies who are also um, have joined us tonight. I know this is called the Word of a Healing, and I know that this, uh, you know, we're, we're known for being a, a, a space for uh, men, it's a male space, but it's good to have these young ladies here who is helping us with with, with doing that. And so I'd like to go to um, Noor Abuzaid. Abuzaid, I hope I'm saying your name right. Yes, um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so Noor, how did you get involved in all of this? Uh, well, last, I wanna say last summer is when it really all started for me. Um, I actually hit up Nev through Twitter um, and I, I saw the efforts that he was doing on the ground in Jersey City and I was like, how can I help? How can I tap in? And long story short, uh, we're here now um, doing coalition work together. Oh, that's great. So um, and then we have Naomi Stevens, who I'm glad that you uh, uh, was able to come on and, uh, you know, and, and took care of your, your uh, the technical issues. Now we're glad that you're with us. So I'll ask you the same question. What um, led you to be involved with um, Free and Mall, New Jersey? Um, well, first off, I've been organizing uh, across the state of New Jersey, specifically in the city of Newark. I also did a, uh, some work in Jersey City as well. But you know, since I was working with in, in college, and even before that, always into community work. So me and Nevin had met, um, maybe it was like in JCU a couple years back. So we've been kind of, you know, like co-organizing. Me and Chris, we went to school together. And um, I was also actively involved in the Concern 44. Um, so the connections just came together. And as the Zion Park project began to develop, um, we took on a more radical agenda. And we were able to, you know, understand the necessity of freeing our political prisoners because, uh, well, not to get into the conversation, but political prisoners go to the very heart of racism the nature of racism in society so we uh, need to talk about it so of course so another asked me to join i was i was down all right that's great um so i don't want to hog up all the questions so ray um you got some the questions to ask our our guests well it, it's it's amazing first i yeah, i'll have a question but you know i just want to tell you guys you know how how proud I am of mm -hmm. you guys because when I was just thinking about this the other day and I know y'all have real short time when they were talking about Muma I remember that night that it happened coming from Camden New Jersey I remember how it hit the 11 o'clock news I remember that next day all the stuff that we did and, and I'm you know I just want to say you know I am so proud of you guys um uh, what other organizations do you guys partner with, if I can ask that? Anyone can answer. Well, we definitely appreciate the love. Uh, I myself, I organize, I'm one of the co-founders with Black Men United. 
and I also organized, you know, where everybody on this call was free and more in New Jersey. Yeah, um, as you st as Ray stated, um, him and I are both from Camden, New Jersey. I lived in Newark for a long time. So that was one of the reasons, um, especially Nev, when I reached out to you and I seen that, you know, um, the work that you were doing and, uh, you know, up in, in that area, um, considering that I lived all through that area and from Camden, New Jersey, and also understanding, as Ray um, know, about a lot of the issues that, um, you know, that that is that that. A lot of the issues that you know we experience, um, we have experienced and still experience in places like Newark and Camden and Patterson, Jersey City, and and um, those type of places like that. Um, what has been um, what has been uh, the most difficult, if I could say, what what have been the biggest obstacles that any of you have faced, and, and anyone can um, answer that in this type of work. You know, one of our most pressing issues is resources. You know. If, if we had the ability to uh, give the proper resources that we needed to enact the, you know, the programs and, you know, just intensify our, our already driven efforts in the community, we would be at a different space. I think that's one of our number one issues right now. So, um, so do uh, uh, with, with uh, Noor and um, Naomi, and especially Naomi, since you have a lot more um, experience in this, um, what, I guess I asked you guys that question also, um, what has been the biggest obstacles that you guys have faced in this type of work and in this struggle? Definitely resonating with what Nevin said is the resources are, are very much, um, you know, like the lack of resources. For example, you know, Nevin and um, Soul and Soul JC has, you know, distributions that they do. Also, another organization that we organize with is North Can. Um, which is located in the city of North too. So getting consistent food, like we don't want to just have events or, or programs where we feed them and it's only like we feed people and it's only once a week. Um, you know, like we want it to be more consistent. Um, also too, when we give out clothes and, and it's where do we find that? A lot of times the events that we have at Zion Park, the donations that we get are from the people. So it's like, you know, um, but if we can find ways to be more consistent with our work that we do in the community, I feel like we, it's, it's a big obstacle. Also, too, <clears throat> trying to, you know, educate and, you know, uh, uh, like unroot some of those some of those system, like things that have passed on from generation to generation mm -hmm. that has made our people so um, resistant to change or or not wanting better. So that whole um, unlearn to relearn process has been some difficult at times, especially being younger. Cause you know, it's like, what, what do you know? Uh, what can you really teach with your agent and, and being counted out for being younger, but definitely one of our biggest, one of my biggest obstacles, especially organizing in Newark has been the people that look just like me. So, um, that's why black power is definitely important. Uh, just to echo Nevin and Naomi's sentiments about lack of resources. Um, money being a a very challenging variable. I would say like most of the um, donations that we do receive are from the people or from work within organizations that we will like, we'll safeguard the funds and all that stuff and like discuss it amongst each other. Um, yeah, like just speaking to the fact that like lack of resources is a challenge, but it doesn't really stop anything that we do with our efforts. So yeah, so I need you guys to really, you know, Tell, tell us about the program. Tell us about, you know, I, I heard the resource, you need clothes, you need food, uh, to educate, unlearn and unlearn uh, uh, money issue. So, uh, and, and there's a remnant, there's, and, and I heard the young lady say about being younger, but there is a remnant of older people like myself. I'm 62, I'm a baby boomer, but I have enough understanding that this is not the 60s or 70s. So the, 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 the uh, things that has to happen now has to come from you guys. My my whole thing is just to help you with the foundation, but you guys have have the strategies now. So there is a remnant of us, like me, us, us, them, right, that are here for you guys. That we have the resources and education. So there's a remnant that if you stay open and just tap into that, I'm more than willing to tap into people like myself, older people that you know, you know, because when you look, look can I be honest? When I look at clothes, food, I'm like, you got to be kidding. That, that's an easy fix for people like us because we already have those connections. But you guys have the strategies. So I really need to, I want you guys, because I'm going to, when I share this to all my people, you know, that's like me, 
I want to tell them what's up to the type of programs you guys are doing. I know about the feeding. I know about the clothing. And, and that's, you know, that's stuff what we all do. But what do they need to unlearn? Be, you know, be real transparent. Just tell us what you need. Right. Because you do have support. And uh, just real quick, I grew up in I'm, I grew up in the 60s. My babysitters, my uncle was a Black Panther. My babysitter and her her boyfriend, Gary Brown, back then was the right hand of Stokey Carmichael. My mom had me marching. So I am. I Look, I was so black. Right. I was so radical and all that stuff. I, I didn't eat vanilla ice cream. <laughs> So look, I need y'all to loosen up, right? I need y'all to loosen up, right? Loosen up, right? And look, tell the people what you need. Tell the people what you're doing. Going over the coalition that I'm a part of, the name is Solidarity and Mutual Aid, Jersey City. Um, mutual aid is like usually defined as like helping the people get their basic needs met, which is, as you touched on, Ray, uh, food, you know, clothing, sometimes crowdfunding for shelter um, if folks, you know, do not have proper housing conditions, et cetera. Um, but... For lack of better words, like at the end of the day, we should call them survival programs, you know, yeah. even more so like decolonization programs, because to divest from the state is doing literally that in practice. So. Um, so we're just going to go around. Um, we're going to hit Naomi, Chris. I see Nev is back with us. So basically, you know, Raiden already started. Um, Norton already got the ball rolling. So like Ray said, just tell us what you need, what you want, what we got to unlearn and all of those things. I truly, I truly appreciate the, the, the space to actually keep it real. Um, and honestly, uh, given the Zion Park project, I'll, I'll explain it just a little bit. And is, is basically taking Zion Park, I, I would like to say is our direct response to gentrification and the west ward of Newark, New Jersey, but in Newark as a, as a whole um, city. We literally occupied that space and we decided as the people that we're going to transform it into a garden or a, an event center, a cultural event center, um, to preserve the culture that's being you know redlined out or gentrified out in the area. Um, and there's also a lot of abandoned property in the West Ward of Newark that ha has left the remnants of the Newark Rebellion. Um, so we so we got a lot of work to do, and, and people are walking around in, in, in what's called the sacrifice zone that I just realized through um, research that I did with Rutgers, where, you know, like there, the, the soil in Newark is you cannot grow food directly in that ground. It will be toxic. Um, mm -hmm. But how do we teach that that type of, you know, sustainable, how do how of people feed themselves when the, the nearest shop right or the nearest whole foods is all downtown so now you have these 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 uh, food insecurities so zion park is trying to tackle that at the core so to you know make a statement that we're not going to let our culture um die out as these different groups of people move in um so definitely we we need paint we need fertilizer we need planter boxes that's right um, we, we intend go. on building a stage area. So anybody that knows any concrete that knows any contractors, we want to build up a very nice stage area. We need artists. Um, anything like uh, we need help. Any and I, I appreciate so much the help that I'm getting from my elders on this project because you know a lot of times you know the vision is not the the complete vision until we can begin to see the end. So mm -hmm. allowing us to use our imagination, but definitely we need those 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 resources to build up. Um, that area, so people can come back and they won't have to go to the British Center. They won't have to go downtown North. They can just come straight to Zion Park for their events. Um, and hopefully it will be a stand against the city for what they're doing that is wrong. You're kicking out people who, um, that can't afford to live in different areas. And that's not right. Okay, I'm done. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, those of you who are listening to us that, that lives up in the North Jersey, New York uh, City area, um, you, you're, you're, you're hearing what, what's needed in Zion Park. You, I mean, look, if you don't volunteer your time, you know, if you don't have um, the, um, money or you don't have those other type of resources, you do have your you do have yourself. You have your own time that um, time is valuable, too. And so, you know, like like you just heard the young ladies and the gentlemen say they need resources and resources is also yourself. Chris, it's on you. What's going on? Yeah, I mean, that whole thing kind of goes back to like that whole like idea of like community control and like having that idea of like 
you know, going back to those ideas from the 60s, like revolutionary nationalism and following in that, you know, tradition, um, you know, Naomi spoke about, you know, the whole need to like reclaim, like, you know, these lots that are around the city and, you know, turning them into concrete examples of like a liberated zone. And, you know, with that concrete example, then, you know, you could have people come in and like build that community. One of the biggest things that um, I think was touched upon somewhat, but, you know, a lot of younger folks and especially a lot of younger folks who are coming into activism, you know, they don't really have a connection with like the radical elders. They don't have a connection with the radical past. And so they're trying to copy and paste things that they see in a textbook or a documentary without any reference point or without any type of mentorship. Uh, hey, one of the, hey, one Chris, of the programs um, that we did. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let, let me interject in there because I don't want that point to be lost. You said that a lot of the younger people that are coming into the movement now don't have that connection with the radical elders. Um, why do you think that is? Well, <laughs> there's a long war um, by the U.S. government against, you know, groups like the Panthers against the Young Lords. And, you know, for example, when we're trying to bring in, uh, you know, w with one of our programs, we had a cultural liberation program where we had artists and vendors from around the community. And we also had folks who were like original members of the Black Panther Party uh, who were part of the Newark chapter. And, you know, he's, you know, during that event, he spoke on the fact that, you know, the FBI was at war with him as comrades and still are. That's why, you know, you got Panthers still in prison. That's why you got Mumia and Russell Maroon Schultz and Sundiata still behind bars. And, you know, there is no revolution. There's no type of idea of liberation without building that type of like community. And um, I also want to touch on the point because uh, Nev, you know, is a, uh, kind of he's not able to come on but he, he's asking also um to talk to speak on the need for uh you know political education and so for example one of the things that we do with like these liberated zones is use that also for a space for political education and like weave that into like any cultural events that we have also but you know as we expand and as we like grow in membership with our respective orgs uh especially with black man united um you know, we need like physical copies of like books and you know of texts and stuff for political education, so that folks can engage with a reading list, so that we can, you know, have sort of more structured uh, programs to get people, you know, a little bit more disciplined and you know, you know, ready as organizers, so that they can go out and you know, build you know even greater capacity. So when you when you say and either one of y'all can answer this, so when you say political education Br break that down actually to a simplest form for for our listeners what what do you actually mean i know we want to read the book what does that really mean to you because we you got politics and a lot of people take politics for whatever it is but when you talk about it in the sense of a revolution when you talk about it in the sense of change what does that look like Well, developing a. Well, I'm, I'm gonna let Nora go because she she's uh, leading actually a reading uh, reading group uh, right now as well. But basically, you know, going back to that idea of you know a revolutionary is after the seizure of power. You know, a revolutionary you know wants the ability to define uh, phenomena and make it act in the desired manner. So this idea that you know power is in the hands of people collectively organizing control over their lives rather than, you know, going and voting for someone who's going to be a part of a system that is ultimately there to ensure your exploitation. So understanding how to like, you know, grow that power collectively uh, goes a lot into that, you know, raising of political consciousness. Um. So when we talk about political education, um, I think it, it was Kwame Ture who said this, that um, to go through the process of political education is to struggle. Um, and that is part of the journey to coming to terms with your reality as well. Um, and you know, to speak to Chris's point, it's like when you do read these texts, you need to embody them in practice you know, that there can't be a contradiction there. So it's like when you talk about liberation, um, you really have to like embody that in practice. So like, what does that look like? Um, and to even emphasize Chris's point again about including our elders because there is no liberation without our elders, um, which is what put us on this path to really honing in on freeing every single political prisoner in the US and abroad um, because they're the blueprint, you know?
So they, they started this movement so that we could also carry the torch. Um, and we can't do that without them free and home. So the, but the other organization that deal with black men um, that you were talking about, um, you know, considering that, that um, you know, this show is geared towards black men, but everything that we talked about is relevant because black men live in these neighborhoods and in the communities. And we work along with our sisters side by side, you know, as comradeship. Um, uh, but specifically with the or, um, with the organization that that focuses on black men, what services um, specifically do do you offer there? I don't know. Yeah, you could ask Nev that question. Uh, Nev, I was asked. Uh, the question is: What services on Black Men United? What um, specific services um, that Black Men United um, um, offer? Right now, we currently. Can you hear me, family? Yes. Copy. Thank. Thank. The, thank the Lord that you can hear me, family. But right now, we currently offer survival programs. We also offer a political education program for the general community and for new members that we bring in. Uh, a lot of our programs are are, are, are very loosely in structure right now. We're working to develop them. Uh, we do empowerment, community cleanup programs as well to empower our community. Uh, on a case-by-case -case basis, when we have family members and community members in need, we'll uh, gather resources for them, raise resources for them, see what programs we could, we could, we could plug them into. We're kind of like a general resource for the community. I keep hearing y'all. What what is what is the survival program? Because that's the second time I've heard that. Yeah. So I could I could break that down. I'm so happy I got connection to build. I've been ah, it's beautiful. But uh, <laughs> survival programs, right? So you know, and you know, we we building with our family, and, and we could put this in simple terms. In terms of organizing the people, I can't organize with my brother or sister if I can't give them a meal and they hungry, or right. if they need a job and I can't provide them with a blazer or some credentials to even get in that position. So our survival programs are based on meeting the people's needs so that we can organize the people. It's also coming out of a position of love for our people because we love our people, we protect our people, and we care for them. So uh, understanding that it's a survival program in the sense that, you know, people need these resources to live. And, you know, we're not, you know, we're not inventing the the wheel here we adopted survival programs from the black panthers from huey newton who theorized survival pending revolution so we understand that these programs are temporary in the sense that you know we we provide these programs to the people as we organize the people around their greater needs as we build up the revolution and as we construct the new society we know that these programs ultimately won't sustain the people forever and we don't you know mix words with the people on that either mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that's the thing on, on the survival program. So let me start hitting y'all with some tough, some tough questions. So, and, and I knew that where that model came from. So how was that? How how did the Panthers? Uh, 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 how were they funded? To, to I mean, they was there on the breakfast program. They was I mean, they was doing everything. You didn't have to worry about nothing. So how, based on that model, and you 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 recreating the model, you, or not recreate, just duplicating the model. How were they funded, and how how were they? How did they achieve the resources that they got? I guess I'm gonna go first, uh, <laughs> and I'm going somewhere with this. Go ahead. But, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, a lot of them came from donations from the community and donations from local businesses, uh, and you know that whole idea of trying to build around you know a collective idea, you know, in the community rather than just you know having folks you know, profit individually. Mm -hmm. And so like, you know, a lot of programs that we do when we're involved with like, you know, again, survival programs with our various organizations, you know, it's all like, you know, funded by or donated materials. Or, you know, if we, you know, sometimes we even use modern stuff like Cash App or, you know, those types of uh, networks also to raise money. So, so uh, have you gotten, have any of you guys, any of you guys can answer this one. Have you, um, how, how have you gotten any support from the faith community out there, um, um, uh, out where you where you are? Oh, that's Naomi. <laughs> I have a, a conviction in my heart when it comes to the reception of this type of movement that I've been doing within the church, uh, specifically the Black Church. Um, and this is not to to downplay, you know, like anybody. It's more so to say that. The support is beyond the gestures um, 
it's beyond the gestures and beyond the the handouts. It's, it's actually getting out there and doing the grassroots, you know, work and, and outreach. Um, so specifically, my church that I go to, where my mom is pastor, she actually is the one that founded the nonprofit organization that Zion Park is underneath. Um, it's mm-hmm. called Sunday's Hope, and it's actually about you know building up and, and rehabilitating our black men. Um, it's S O N, meaning like son, like a like a like a male son, a male child. Sunday's Hope. Um, she and start she started prison um, prison reentry program. I mean reentry programs, you know, like from prison. Um, she did she she teaches about rehabilitation drugs, um, gang violence, because we're right in the middle of the West Ward of Newark. So there definitely is a lot, you know, like a lot of black men in need. Mm. Um, that's the center focus of our nonprofit organization. So yes, I have received, you know, like support from those Christians that truly believe that it's not just about being Christian. Um, it's about, you know, the heart and soul of, you know, Christ and, and what we what we were commissioned to do. So that people I do, but however, I have also received backlash on the opposing end because of how um, extreme the agenda is and how bad we, we want revolution. Um, and sometimes I really do struggle with trying to break out of that docile mindset um, to really understand the depths of what the, the bigger fight is. So if I, as a, as a coming from a faith-based organization, can kind of break that statistic, break that stereotype, it, it wouldn't be enough to leave out these people because the revolution is for all people. So I definitely do. Um, hold my faith-based community accountable to the grassroots works that needs to be done. Okay, so look, this and here's what's so powerful. I heard y'all talked about housing. What is the biggest issue with housing that you have? I think Naomi briefly touched on this, um, talking about Zion Park as um, a liberated ground. I, I feel like I'm saying that wrong. Please correct me, um, Naomi. But the fact that most people have been pushed out of their homes and redlined and gentr- like because of gentrification and like the ongoing practice of that. Um, I-, I think that is one main issue of housing that we see that folks are facing right now. And honestly, like individually as well. Mm. Um, I-, I want to, to come back to um, Nev, um, uh, uh, Nevin. Um, Nevin, um, uh, what political education is specifically that you spe- that is specifically directed Toward black men. Uh, if I could just speak to the to the to the housing situation just for one second, and then we sure. can get into that. So, assessing the, the the issue of gentrification in our community is multifaceted. It's the it's the city not providing affordable housing for the community, but it's also at the times that they do provide affordable housing to different programs in the community, such like the, the Urban League. Uh, folks do backdoor deals and, and the housing never gets to the community. So the city provided the Urban League with three lots to build up stories of affordable housing nearly a decade and a half ago. Uh, the Urban League sold that to uh, a daycare for $1.5 million after they got the land for a dollar. And then that daycare sold that to a developer for 850000 And we only just finding out about this scandal because the city is filing a lawsuit against the Urban League. So, you know, we're facing, we facing situations from, from the city government in terms of affordable housing, but also some of these, you know, big name organizations that's supposed to be doing the work for the people is, you know, based on greed and exploiting the people's struggle. Wow. I'm in the Urban League. <laughs> wow. Right. Right. So, I... You guys make on, on your housing component. You guys make sure that you contact me, and my cousin can tell you why. Uh, I'm. Uh, can I say this in all humility? I'm probably the housing guru, one of the housing gurus in the United States. I just housed over 500 people down in New Orleans. Get ready to house some more. So, you guys, you have you. Just getting time on that component and uh, some other ones with you know uh, structuring and things like that. Um, just, just that's all I'm gonna say. I don't want to say too much over the air, but you right, guys get right. with me and you guys. Oh, you'll have my. I put it like this: you guys will have my full support, and uh, we we can make a difference. Trust me. So I'm gonna leave that at that. And, and that's one of the reasons why you know we have all of you on because 
you know, it's not about just, you know, um, doing this interview for us. It's also about, as my cousin said, as Ray said, connecting you, connecting you all to resources and the resources that you need. You know, um, hey, Nevin, man, I, I, I mean, <laughs> that information you just shared about the Urban League and the housing, I mean, this is stuff, and I'm glad you said this, and I'm glad that um, um, that you guys are going to, are, are doing a whole hour with us because that information right there, I believe, is being duplicated everywhere where we live at. And um, the fact that you put it out there like that, um, man, I mean, you know, I mean, that, that just really just got to the core of me right then when you said that. You know, here it is. You got the Urban League and all of this wheeling and dealing. And here it is, man. It's like neg negatively impacting, you know, our people, you know, and, um, and, and shortchanging our people, man. You know, and this is the reason why it is so crucial to have, um, um, you know, uh, uh, organizations such as um, such as y'all's uh, to be on the ground like that. I wanted to um, jump back over to Naomi real quick. Because they only brought about the faith aspect, and all of us are people of faith. Well, I am, my cousin is, um, my wife, um, who's producing this, is. And um, one of the things we found, uh, Naomi, if you can hear me, one of the things that we found um, that is was common is common in these circles of um, um, activism is this anti-religious um, 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 disposition that we find amongst a lot of folks that we work with. Have you found that um, uh, that to be true? And if so, what do you say to, um, especially younger people, people in your age group, that um, that have this this attitude towards people of faith that are doing this work? Um, I'm so glad that you brought up this point because I definitely have experienced it up to this present moment. Um, not being able to be, you know, comfortably practicing your religion and in fine with this struggle. And my response also is uh, left behind. If we are going to sit here and talk about unity, we're going to sit here and talk about coming together and wanting to do so many things um, for the community. It's like, how do we, how do you leave out a whole group of people because of their religious struggle? Um, and I definitely feel like there needs to be more conversations because at the end of the, at the end of the day, the struggle is not um, between which religion is, is the best or which one has the, the best doctrine or, or can convert as many people. It's about the struggle at hand. It, it doesn't matter whether you're black Christian, black Muslim, or, or whatever other faith organization, you are still black at the very core. So creating this discord among us or, or saying that, you know, people that practice religion shouldn't be a part of this sector or or judging them, but also too, I have to also always take accountability. Being a, a, a Christian and, and growing up in the church, I thank God for my parents who were both pastors that allowed me to, they were both, one of the most fondest memories of my parents was leading a huge march up South Orange Avenue. So they were definitely organizing, you know, um, trying to get that community rebuilt. The name of our church is literally Community House of Prayer. So I, I'm grateful for my parents. However, I also have to take accountability for those Christians that have not made it comfortable for other religions to come together um, and, and to do this work. Um, uh, so let me go back to Nevin real quick um, about uh, because I, I, I want I want you to get into the other question about the political education that's specifically directed towards black men. Absolutely. So uh, our political education program is rooted in Pan-Africanism and it's a, it's a multifaceted program. So there's there's the direct there's the, pardon me. There's the direct education that's focused on history the politics of colonialism, imperialism, the politics of struggle and armed warfare, and then ultimately the politics of Pan-Africanism. And it's a multi-stage educational program that while you're reading, we're also slowly engaging you like in our active services that we have to see how you interact with the people. And then, you know, there, there's conversations that take place in terms of like strategy, in terms of how to build relationships with the people. So it, 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 it's a, a political education program in books, but it's also kind of like a a grooming process as we groom you to serve the people and uh we found it to be quite successful one of the one of the bigger challenges is you know there's a, a lot of strongholds that that have the attention of young black males in like urban areas you know so getting them to divest from the things that they have their attention currently set to 
and you know investing in these other programs that we do and i i, I tell my people plainly you know what i mean because unfortunately uh a, a, a lot of our brothers and sisters are you know act like a lot of our brothers and sisters are uh you know uh struggling with drug abuse in our community and you know and getting our people to you know lose that grip hole i tell people you know the same type of this, the same type of high that you're chasing here in this situation, not also directly just from drugs, but, you know, people have a strong grip hold for attention and, you know, visibility and, and, and competition and wanting to be on top of each other. The same drive that you seek seeking and that thrill that you get from that, you can have that same thrill in serving the people. So once we expose people to that, we often find that they're receptive. Y'all give us some closing remarks. What you think people want to hear? Just, you know, leave us with something positive that we can do. Get, make sure y'all give us your information, website, uh, uh, contact information. So real quick, just go around and just tell us what you, you know, as they say, drop it like it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, upcoming programs, including letter writing programs to political prisoners. Uh, you know, educational programs, uh, you know, virtually. And also we're going to have like upcoming programs uh, physically, you know, through, you know, through spaces like Zion Park. Uh, so for anyone who wants to get tapped in and, you know, just, you know, find a place in terms of organizing, because like one of the big things that we're about also when we're creating concrete examples, we also want to create a concrete example of like, you know, you know, a lot of people talk about revolutionary love, but in terms of, you know, Putting that into practice, you know, giving people a home where they can organize, you know, where they can have, you know, a space to get involved. And, you know, in getting involved with political prisoners, like, you're kind of forced very quickly to, you know, know what they stand for. Uh, you're forced very quickly to know the inherent, you know, right of any, you know, oppressed, exploited, colonized people uh, to struggle for self-determination. Uh, so... You know, if you want to get tapped in with us, uh, you can follow us on Instagram uh, at Freedom All New Jersey, Freedom All NJ. Uh, our email is also Freedom All NJ at Gmail. Uh, you know, it's Freedom All. You know, just as it just as it said, uh, no, you know, no th. Um, but yeah, I don't know if Nev wants to plug, you know, BMU information, but I'm gonna go ahead on that. Uh, thank you, brother. Is that time? Absolutely. Uh, folks can get in tune with Black Men United through any of our various social medias. We, uh, underscore Black Men United underscore on Instagram, uh, on Twitter for our, you know, our intellectual, social, and sometimes for spicy commentary. Uh, also the work as well is visible on Twitter. It's, uh, Black M-U-J-C, and folks could always email us, uh, especially for brothers, you know, that's looking to build with us uh black united zero at gmail.com okay so we'll, we'll go to naomi okay i would just like to say thank you so much for having us um it's definitely great to you know build um in any type of space but i definitely appreciate this conversation um definitely we need as many hands as many feet on the zion park project as possible just for that outreach um that we can actually get these people um, that need help into the proper programs or in connections with the proper people. So we definitely need foot soldiers um, that would be willing to work. Um, you can contact us at Zion Park NJ on Instagram, or um, you can send me an email at sundayshope at gmail.com. That's S-O-N-D-A-Y-S-H-O-P-E um, at gmail.com. And you just need um, just hands and feet. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Well, um, it looks like we got Sister Noor. Uh, closing thoughts. Um, just to lead with revolutionary love. And that's how we're going to get stuff done. Um, you can tap in with Solidarity Jersey City at Solidarity JC on Twitter. And then I believe, yeah, it's Solidarity dot jersey city um on instagram as well and we need as many hands as we can all right back to you ray and and, and you know what i'm sorry the, the the biggest question i wanted to ask y'all but we have to get out here and, and just say yes or no are y'all connected with anybody in camden new jersey 
Not really. Any organizations? Not really. Okay, we we got, I got a change. feeling that I got a feeling that, yeah. that you are now. Trying to plug it. Yeah, you are now. You yeah, y'all I'm make sure y'all get my information. Now. So 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 okay. So <laughs> hey, look, I just wanted. I, I I really like. I said, you know, don't you know? I I'm really turned up and all that. But I get excited when I see young people. Yes. Uh, I mean, because you you're the ones. Change is not going to happen unless you happen. Every revolution that ever took place in the world were done by young folks. And right. I have enough sense to allow y'all, and I don't mean to say it like allow y'all. I have enough sense to to follow y'all, y'all creativity, y'all your your, your strategies for twenty twenty one, and humble myself and just be here for the things that you might need uh, as a resource or a source that can help y'all move forward. So I just want to tell y'all again, I love y'all, and, and and God loves you. And guess what? Ain't nothing you can do about it. Turn it back over to my cousin. <laughs> All right, and um, definitely, man, this has been a pleasure. Um, uh, we, we're definitely going to invite you guys back again. Um, this is just look, look, look. Um, you know, um, yo, you can't shake us now. You know what I mean? You ain't gonna be able to shake us now. And um, we're definitely going to plug you guys in, um, and we're going to get plugged in with you guys. And I, and you know, Ray, I, I definitely agree with what you what you just said just now about you know um, our young men and women, man, leading, man. I mean, we you know we did, did our thing, and we're still doing our thing. But you know, hey man, look, you know it's it's time to pass that baton, and um, from what I see here today, I think we I think we're in good shape. You know what I mean? We're in, good, we, we're we're in good very hands. very we're good, good shape. That's right. So look, um, so we like to thank we, everybody. We for here. <laughs> <laughs> so we like to thank everybody for um, for tuning in for joining us. Um, thank you to um, Nevin Perkins and uh, Chris um, uh, Duran. Uh, Naomi Stevens, uh, Noor Abu uh, Zaid, and of course, my cousin, my ride and die, my mentor, Ray Wilkerson. <laughs> yeah. And let me not forget. <laughs> you got to forget. Then our producer, my lovely wife, Jack Jacqueline Lukeman. So, you know. So, Jackie. look. Look, um, we thank you guys for taking out the time. And, um, and um, we just have so much respect and love for y'all. Um, we're, you know, y'all, you know, y'all the children of the struggle, you know, and, um, and y'all carrying this thing further. So, um, thank you for, for joining us tonight and, um, be safe this can, weekend can, can, and be can, safe always. Can, can I just leave this last word with you guys? Look, trust that's what's in you, right? When you get opportunities like that, trust that was in you. It doesn't matter if people receive it or not. Consider yourself in, in, in places like this. You are planners. You are planners. You, you just planning. Just just keep planning into people. And you might not see no change in them, but it, but someone comes behind and water what you placed in them. So I want you guys, the next time you are, especially on this platform, just come in loose, come in live, and just trust. Because I'm telling you, 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 listen, you have the slightest iota of the potential that y'all have. You, you, you can't fathom the greatness that I'm seeing in you guys. And I'm not just saying this. Yeah, and they're watch this, and their souls attach to you, and they'll never see the things that they need to see in this world unless they see it in your life. You guys are definitely part of that healing. So we thank you for joining us, and we thank our guests for joining us. This is the Waters of Healing with Baba Lukeman and Ray Wilkerson. Good night.